Now that we've fixed project two, let's look at some more advanced auto layout techniques. Go ahead and close project 6A, that's our copy of project two. Then make a new single view app. I'll go to file, new project, choose iOS, single view app, and press next. I call this thing project 6B, and put that on my desktop. Now in viewcontrol.swift, I'm gonna make some user interface in code. Uh, in our viewed load method, I'm gonna start by saying let label one equals a UI label. This thing just being a piece of text in our UI. I'll then say label one dot translates auto resizing mask into constraints. TAMIC, that's how it's usually short on T-A-M-I-C. So label one dot TAMIC uh, equals false. Uh, label one dot background color, I'm going to use dot red. And label one dot text, I'm going to say is these. And then use label one dot size to fit. So it takes up enough space to hold the word these. Then I'll copy and paste this code several times. So we have label one there, and again, and again for label four. Then again, we'll do five in total. I'll just change this quickly. So we've got five, 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 and then five here. Then four, 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 and then four, three, 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 and finally two. So that's five different labels, all with background red color right now, uh, all with the word these. I'm gonna give each of these things different background colors and different words so they stand out more clearly. So we have red for one number one, number two, I'm gonna use dot cyan, and then write for its text, R. And then background color label three, we'll use yellow. And for the text, we're going to say sum. Uh, for background color, uh, for label four, sorry, we'll use background color green. And then for its text, we'll say awesome. And for label five, we'll use UI color orange and text labels. So that's now five individual labels uh, with different colors and texts, all sides to fit their text correctly. Finally, we're gonna add those five to the screen using view.addSubView, label one. Again, copy and paste a few times. We've got five, four, three, two, and then one. So, we've just done a lot of work here. Let's just break down what it's doing really quickly. We're using UI label, which is a UI kit type that shows static text on the screen. We're setting each one to have TAMIC, translate auto sizing mask into constraints, to be false, which means we have to make our constraints by hand. Auto resizing masks are an older iOS way of doing layouts. They let you say, be flexible in the width and height, but be fixed top and bottom. Uh, it kind of worked when you had older phones, older devices. It's not great with the more advanced world we live in today with many devices. Uh, so a better idea is auto layout with constraints. Hence this thing here saying, don't make constraints for me, I'll make them myself, that's what it's saying. Uh, they have a unique background color uh, with red, cyan, yellow, green, and orange. They have unique text. Uh, these are some awesome labels, that's text that appears in the label. And finally, we size to fit each label. So look at the size required, show the word text in the default font, and make sure the label takes up that much space and no more. After that's done, we call add subview on our main view five times, once for each label we just created. So each label shown on the screen. If you're on the app now, uh, you should hopefully see some colorful labels at the top, the five we just made, but they'll all overlap. Let's find out. Boom, there we go. We can see uh, Able's Me, thanks to this curve in my device, uh, going behind the status bar, of course. Um, so there's our, our labels all overlapping. Um, what you're seeing really is uh, labels, uh, which is this thing here, the last thing to be added on top. And behind that, the me of awesome. That's what you're seeing on that screen. Now that happens because our labels are placed in their default position, which is the top left of the screen. And they're all sized to fit their content thanks to calling size to fit on each of them. We're now gonna add some constraints that say each label should start at the left edge of its super view and end at the right edge. So it'll stretch from the left to the right. 
and we'll do this using auto layout, but using code called visual format language, which is kind of like a way to draw the layout you want with a series of keyboard symbols. Before we do that, we have to create a dictionary of the views we want to lay out. The reason VFL needs this will become clear shortly, but first, here's the dictionary we have to add below this last call to add subview. We'll say, let views dictionary equals label one as a string, then colon label one itself, the label. Then label two, uh, colon label two, label three, colon label three, label four, colon label four, and label five, colon label five. So that's our five labels. The labels themselves here as the, the loose objects, and the same thing as a string beforehand as the keys in our dictionary. So if I want to read label one, our actual UI label instance, I can use view dictionaries, quotes, label one as a string to read it out. Now this might seem really redundant, but wait just a minute longer, it'll make sense once you see visual format language in action. So below this views dictionary, uh, dictionary here, we're going to say view dot add constraints, ns layout constraint dot constraints with visual format. And here I'm going to write the string h colon pipe open bracket label one close bracket pipe. For options I'll do an empty array. Metrics I'll do nil and views I'm going to say are views dictionary. Then I'll do that line again with copy and paste. I'll say that level two, three, four, and five. Let's modify it here so it says five, four, three, and two. So all our labels go into the same visual format language with just different numbers inside that string. Now that's a lot of code, but it's actually doing the same thing five times over. As a result, we could rewrite them into a loop if we wanted to. We could say for label in views dictionary dot keys run just one line of code as a loop like that. There we go. And our loop was going to say uh, view or add constraints and add constraint with format. Da, da, da. But here we have this the label number. We don't want to write label one directly. We want to use that key instead. So I'll say uh, string interpolation label like that. Otherwise, the code is the same. So let's eliminate the easy stuff, then focus on what remains. We have this call to view dot add constraints. View is our main view here, the main view for our view controller. That's the actual big white empty space itself, our main canvas for this view controller. And this add constraints call adds an array of constraints to our view controller's view. This array is used rather than a single constraint because VFL can generate multiple constraints at a time with more advanced language. This method, nslayoutconstraint.constraints with visual format, that's the auto layout method that converts VFL into an array of constraints. It accepts a lot of parameters, but the important ones are the first and last. We pass an empty array into options and nil for metrics. You can use these to customize the meaning of the VFL, but right now we don't care. And then we pass in this views dictionary. So when we use a string like label one, auto layout knows what we're referring to. So that's the easy stuff. Now let's look at the visual format language itself. This thing here, the H colon pipe brackets, some view name brackets pipe. As you can see, this thing's a string and that string describes how we want our layout to look. That VFL gets converted into auto layout constraints, then added to our view. This H part, that means we're adding a horizontal layout. We'll try a vertical layout soon. This pipe symbol, that means the edge of the view. So we're adding these constraints to the main view inside our view controller. So this effectively means the edge of the view controller. Finally, we have some sort of label and aim in here, like label one or label five. And putting these brackets around it, that means it's a visual way of saying, I mean, put label one here. Imagine the brackets are the edges of the view. This is almost like an ASCII representation of our layout. 
So a string like H colon pipe uh, brackets label one brackets, that means horizontally I want label one to go to the edge of my view. But there's a hiccup. What is label one? What does label one mean? Now we know it's the name of our variable, but variable names are just things for humans to read and write. The variable names aren't actually saved and used when the program runs. And that's where this views dictionary thing comes in. We use strings for the key and UI labels the value. So when we say label one down here in our VFL and views dictionary here, auto layout can put the two together to understand what we mean. So that's the entire VFL line explained. I'm gonna undo a little bit to get back to the string interpolation versions. We have the dictionary being used. Then press Command R to build it and try it again. See how this thing looks with some constraints. And now you can see the label stretch from the left edge to the right edge. They're still overlapping vertically and still below that status bar, which isn't great, but it's better. We're gonna fix the overlapping with another set of constraints, but this time it's just one long line doing a vertical set of VFL. Back in this viewed low method, I'm gonna say view dot add constraints ns layout constraint dot constraints with visual format and we'll add a string this time it's going to be v colon pipe go from the top edge we'll say brackets label one brackets dash brackets label two brackets dash brackets label three brackets dash label four brackets dash label five and for options, I'll do an empty array again. Metrics nil, and views our views dictionary. That's identical to the previous five lines of code we wrote, having the, before we had this loop here. But now we have a V colon layout. It's vertical. And we have multiple views inside our VFL. So lots of constraints will be generated. But there is one new thing. This little dash symbol here which means a space. It is 10 points by default, but you can customize that if you want to. Now notice we don't have a pipe at the end of our VFL here. So we're not forcing the last label to stretch all the way to the edge of our view. This will leave white space after the last label, which is what we want right now. So I'll press Command R to build and run again. We should see all five labels stretching edge to edge horizontally. Then as you can see, spaced out vertically here. Now, it would have taken quite a lot of control dragging in IB to make the same layout. So I hope you can appreciate how powerful VFL is.